Hello, friends. Welcome back. Today, we're going to create complex multidimensional arrays. Um, awesome. You have just learned a ton about arrays. This has been a fairly high-level overview, and there's plenty more to learn about working with arrays, much of which you will see in later sections. But before moving on to looking at objects, let's take one more look and see how arrays can become a bit more complex than what we have seen in previous challenges. One of the most powerful features when thinking of arrays as data structures is that arrays can contain or even be completely made up of other arrays. We have seen arrays that contain arrays in previous challenges, but fairly simple ones. However, arrays can contain an infinite depth of arrays and can, can, and can contain other arrays, each with their own arbitrary levels of depth and so on. In this way, an array can very quickly become very complex data structure, known as a multidimensional or nested array. Consider the following example. Here we have a nested array. First, there's a opening bracket. It's closed down here, and then they're going to create a new one. So here's one. They wrap it with a comma. So now we're, this is position zero. This is position one. Inside of one, you've got more. Inside of two, you've got another deep depth, and then another depth. And then here, you've got an even greater depth. Depthists, depthists. Anyways, while this example may seem convoluted, this level of complexity is not unheard of or even unusual. When dealing with large amounts of data, uh, however, we can still very easily access the deepest levels of an array this complex with this bracket notation. Okay, so nested array at position two. This is position zero, this is position one, and this is position two. And then in position two, we're going to go to position one. This is position zero, this is position one. And then here, we're in position zero. This is position, this is position zero. And then we're going to go to position zero, which is this guy. And then what is in position zero of this? This string. And then that's why we get deepest. So that's why we get 21000. And now we know that the piece, um, and now we know where that piece of data is. We can reset it if we need to. So we could set this deeper still, and then this would become deeper still. Uh, we have defined a variable my nested array. Here we have a defined a variable my nested array and set it equal to an array. So it's set equal to an array. Um, modify my nested array using any combination of strings, numbers, and booleans for data elements so that it has exactly five levels of depth. One, two, three, four, five. Remember the outermost array is level one. Somewhere on the third level, include the string deep. Zero, one, two, three. Splice push. On the fourth level, include the string deeper. And on the fifth level, include the string deepest. Okay, so I'm just going to take these one at a time. My nested array should contain only numbers, booleans, and strings as data elements. My nested array should have exactly five levels of depth. My nested array dot length. So right now I'm just um, pumping out. Okay, so they don't, what, what they mean by this, I think, is that we don't want to make add another element of an array there. I think we only want to be five. It should contain exactly one occurrence of the string deep on, or on an array nested three levels deep. Zero, one, two, three. Hmm. Change the code above this line. Okay, so... Modify my nested array using a combination of strings, numbers, and booleans for data elements so that it has exactly five levels of depth. Okay, so this is the first level. This is the second. This should be here. Okay, level one, level one, two, 
three, four, five. Okay, let's run the test and see what passes. Should contain only numbers, strings, and data elements. Should it be exactly five levels deep? Okay, so this is not right. That's not where we want to go with this. So the depth, oops. The depth um, is going to be five levels deep. So they're saying that they don't want us to add there. Huh. Okay, so I'm just going to say add an array in here. Okay, so this is level one, this is level two, this is level three, this is level four, this is level five. Five levels of depth. What happens if I remove this one? Does that change it? Okay, so this is five levels of depth. One, two, three, four. That's crazy. Anyways. Okay, so now we've got five levels of depth. My nested array should contain exactly one occurrence of the string deep on an array nested three levels deep. So this is one, this is two, this is three. And then so maybe we should go uh, deep. This one doesn't pass, and I'm thinking that that's because I should put it here. Understanding the levels is actually kind of tricky. Okay, so now that this one's passing, now this is level one, and then this must be level two or th and three. And so this is where level three is with the word deep. It should contain exactly one occurrence of the string deeper <coughs> on an array nested four levels deep. So on the next level, we're going to say deeper. Why do I put a comma here? Because this is actually what's going on here. I don't know if this helps, but this is an array that's nested within here. And now we've got deeper. We could also do, have this guy be here, so this will look more like a, a normal array to you. And then, uh, so if we run the test, this one should pass now. And then here on level five, we're going to have deepest. This is kind of a tricky one. It's really just all about passing the tests. Anyway, so that passes the test. Now, let's bring it back so that it just looks like really standard JavaScript. I'm going to pull this way over. And so now you can see that what's going on here is this is an array, and then inside of an array, it's got this like deep array stack. So this is position, I guess it's position one. This is position, well, I guess this is position two. Oh, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is five. And on five, we've got deepest. Now, the way that oftentimes you'll write these kind of um, longer, um, longer ones like this. This is how they usually write it in like JSON and things like this. Now, and this makes it so it's easier to read in my eyes. And you need the comma here because this is within an array. And so, yeah, this is a bit of a tricky one. But I think that this is valuable because understanding this, this is basically a JavaScript ob object notation note. And so a lot of your API work and stuff like that in the future is going to be all about accessing these elements. Um, let's, let's play with this. Instead of saying dot length, we've got my nested array. That'll give us this, this long one. It gives us the feedback. And as you can see, if you um, console log in a, a, a nested array, at a certain point, it's just going to say object. But if we were to go, my nested array, this is at position zero, this is at position one, this is at position two. If we do this at position two, then we have our, our greater array. Now, this is position zero, one, two, three, four, and then five. So if we were to console log position two and then position five, we're actually going to get this deeper, deeper and deepest. This is at position zero, and this is at position one. So if we go position one, we're going to see deeper and deepest, which means it's going to grab this bit of the array. And if we take this, this is at position zero, and this is at position one, position one, and then we get an array with the word deepest in there. Now, say we wanted to get the actual string value of that. 
we would make that zero because deepest is at position zero. And then there we go. Now we've got a string. And actually, if we wanted to just get the letter P, we could go zero, one, two, three. And we can be, and in here we could go three. And that would give us a P. And so you can really go crazy with these uh, nested arrays. It's, it's a great way to have all your uh, data accessible. Anyways, that does pass the test. So um, yeah, if you guys, um, yeah, I think that that is a pretty good way of explaining it. Um, the whole idea is that it's just that you use the tests to find the right answer on this one. And uh, that's kind of common in, in computer programming. So if you were really frustrated by this and you thought it was a crazy thing, well, being able to read the tests and then um, think backwards through them is a really useful thing. Uh, but yeah, everything passes. And I hope you guys found this useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And uh, talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.